barrels mm -hmm. and saw that you've done some sheds or something like that. You would just put foil, no styrofoam on the ground, you put foil, concrete, and then the yeah. radiant tea yeah. pipes in yeah. the Yeah, that's bubble foil bubble. Bubble foil bubble. That's so the, the foil doesn't touch the concrete or it doesn't touch the ground either. And how, how do they keep, how do you keep the guys from damaging it when they're pouring the concrete? Well, if it gets damaged, it doesn't make much difference. Yeah. It's not a really critical thing. It's not as hard as keeping them from damaging the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a greater problem. <laughs> so if you were to do that, if you have your, your thing on the bottom, if you want to use the ground as a heat storage, maybe you don't want that foil in underneath your ground. Ground doesn't make a very good heat storage unless you've got it, unless you've got it contained. Oh. As a matter of fact, uh, any time you put heat into the ground, it'll dissipate. It'll just keep. And if, it, if it's moist, uh, it's an endless heat sink. But when you're talking about using it as a heat source, when using a heat pump to get yeah, it out, yeah, yeah. But that's just because it's at 10 degrees or whatever. Well, uh, the ground temperature is six feet below the ground usually is about uh, 40, 45 to 48, 45 to 50 degrees. And in the fall of the year, it might be a little higher than that. And then it just continually goes down right through till next May. And then hopefully it gets replenished next May. <clears throat> when you have a solar collector on it, it's uh, like if you look at it at a typical ground loop system or geothermal system, you know, the temperature you start here at 55 degrees, that's your EWT entering water temperature, and that just keeps dropping. And it goes right through till May. And then it starts replenishing in May. But if you have a solar system on it, it, not only does it not go at that slope, it goes like this. So it's much more gradual. And uh, by the end of February, the temperature's coming back up again. So you can supercharge it in the summertime, start off with a COP of 6, and wind up with an average COP of 4 for the whole year. And you only have to put in half the ground loop. So in that situation, your geothermal, is that your main heat source for the house? You the just, only. Yeah, and then the source. solar is just to replenish it. Yeah, well, the solar can be used for heat for your as well, water yeah. all summer Whatever long. you have in surplus. As a matter of fact, it can be used for hot water whenever, yeah. whenever it's available. But it's just dumping your yeah. waste heat Excellent. off the solar system into the end of the ground. Because that's one of the biggest problems with solar energy. You know, you, you've got to have a place to store it. The industry has tried to make people believe that this radiation heating is great stuff, but it's horrendously expensive. You go to Calgary, for example, and you can't buy a radiation heating system for less than $30,000. And lots of the people installing them, even in Regina, and I don't know about Saskatoon, but in Regina, they got prices that are just right off the wall. And they're not even properly designed. Uh, at the Foothills Conference in Edmonton a year ago, uh, one of the, uh, <coughs> the key people in North America in radiation heating, can't remember his name now, but that doesn't matter, and uh, he was doing a presentation that was related to the new ASHRAE bulletin. And uh, anyway, the first picture he had was a radiant floor system and there was something like 16 pumps on it. That's not the way you build a radiant floor heating system. The next picture, you had a thermostat. That's not the way you control a radiant floor heating system. And you went through this whole process. And, and the, the, the net result of it was that uh, radiation heating has been vastly oversold. The next picture he showed was a picture of one pump and a manifold. And, uh, you know, that was basically all there was to the system. And my buddy that was with me he says, well, that's the way you build them, isn't it? I said, yeah, that's the way we've always built them. <laughs> we never did get into this business of having a pump on every loop and that kind of stuff. That's crazy. There's no reason for it. So if you were putting a radiant system in here, what would it cost you? Usually, for budget numbers, you can calculate about $3 a square foot. And that includes the manifolds. But not the boiler. 
Oh no, oh no, 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 not at all. <laughs> and the boiler is generally the same, roughly the same t price as a high efficiency furnace. One of the things that we're doing in a lot of instances now is uh, we're putting, it, we're even doing retrofits this way. We put in a boiler, an air handler, and a domestic water tank. So every source of energy in the house comes from the boiler, and the boiler is 96% efficient. So every every appliance in the house has 96% uh, efficiency. And then we're doing a lot of mini district heating systems on farms too, where you have one boiler, you heat the shop, the barn, the hot water, the house, and, and that sort of thing. And we need to get into more district heating systems. Just the waste heat in this country is just unbelievable. You know, you go to the property find billions of BTUs a day that just floats off into the sky. You go to an ice rink, you know, when a 100 ton ice plant is, is running, 1.3 million BTUs an hour just filters off into the sky. Then they'll have 500,000 BTUs water down the other end of the building, heating the, the showroom area, or the show, showcase area. So, I'll just challenge that because I'm mean, coming from a different game here. So this house um, is supposed to use around 3,000 kilowatt hours a year for heating. Yeah. So that would be about three hundred dollars worth of electricity, thirty three hundred and thirty dollars worth of electricity for heat. So if that's correct, and we're, it's looking like it'll be about correct, but we've only monitored it for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't I just, which I think was his question, why wouldn't I just use an electric heat instead of the boiler system? Well, uh, there's no reason why you wouldn't at all. Uh, the I think we should get rid of combustion systems altogether, if I had my way, but uh, there's always this big concern in this country where we're using thermal electric production systems that you want to get away from electrical uh, energy systems. But it's so much cheaper, right? Than oh, the oil not only is it cheaper to put together, but it, it's, it's not, I mean, the cost for BTU is higher. Yeah. No question about yeah, that. about three times. But when you reduce the amount of BTUs, it doesn't make that much difference. Like we, we've got a, a 2,100 square foot house that went in Humboldt. It was heated with a 5 kilowatt electric boiler. We put in 15 and then we cut, dropped 5 kilowatt units off and down to 5. And I think it was a bit short under real serious conditions. No, I don't think so. That one, was, in fact, that one we had to help him because he was, he had it set too hot, remember? Yeah, yeah. He was opening windows and things. and. We just set a change of control settings down, and I don't know if you understand the outdoor reset stuff, but the uh, we set it so that at minus 35 outdoor temperature, the boiler temperature going into his floor was plus 31 C. So several degrees cold on your skin mm -hmm. was all he needed to put it in. A, that's the only that's the the temperature he needed is water going into his floor at minus 35. Otherwise, he was too hot all the time, you know, because this house is working well. But that's still a hydraulic system. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Could yeah. you put like wires in the floor instead of hydronic at all? For sure. And that's that's fairly common in uh, some European areas. Uh, but they eventually burn out. And, and the, if they're in the floor, how do you get it back there again? You know, like you know, they last 10 to 20 years, but I. The, even the manufacturers say that it's uh, got a, a limited life cycle. I didn't realize there was electric boilers. I'm sorry? I didn't realize there was electric boilers. Because they oh, were yeah. thinking about doing the, the you know, like... Yeah, the that, would, that would suit you to have, you know, I was saying it when you said that, of uh, putting your uh, radiant floor system and incorporating that into your uh, masonry boiler. Yeah. So your masonry boiler, which already has high mass, essentially by circulating fluid around, mm -hmm. is now a masonry wall, uh, floor and boiler, you know. Yeah. And I was in. thinking because we're sort of thinking about like him having a basement too. And of course the masonry heater will have to be built, you know, like from the ground up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I was thinking to heat the basement, having just a couple of loops going right into the basement through that big concrete and just... Can and you an, get an another? electric boiler would give you the stability or, you know, when, the, when you don't have, have a fire. It on. When you've got a good wood supply, I guess. 
Or what kind of well, did it burn? Well, I guess I guess we're gonna have to find one. Yeah. We're planting lots of trees. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah. There's lots of yeah. new uh, wood burning systems in Europe now. Yeah. Extremely popular over there. And uh, wood is the only uh, uh, CO2 neutral energy source there is. Sure. For combustion. Yeah, yeah. Is there? Did you have a picture of an electric boiler? Uh, I thought when I first sat down you had one. Uh, well, out. I think the first thing you saw were uh, heat pumps uh, in that uh, mine. In that, uh, no, it wasn't the one in the mine. There was one where there was a manifold in the wall, uh, a water storage tank, and a stainless steel. This is heat pumps in, the, in that system there. Uh, no, it was right. before. Oh, Did you have a picture of the line? <coughs> yeah. Well, that <coughs> might have been. <coughs> That Lang boiler is a phenomenal boiler. It's, uh, it's really cool. It's made in, in Europe, but it's uh, it has uh, there's three, four systems, uh, sequencing systems you can set up on it. But for radiant floor heating, we always use the uh, it, it cycles on in three cycles because there's three elements. And if it, the first I think element it was comes on, on desktop. Runs yeah, for check, two the desktop. check the desktop. And if the temperature hasn't, if it stabilizes, that's all that comes on. It was still dropping the second element, come on, and then it'll back off.